It's very brightly colored and it's very loud. And it's fun for a while. We want to be free to, to do what we, we want to do. We're Muhammad Ali and Sonny Barger, the president of Hells Angels. This is 109.5. What is it? Is it is it um, is it the is it the World Cup for rugby now? Or what's the uh... no 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 no? There's um, the Autumn Internationals are okay. starting, which is like the it's kind of England England Wales Scotland games against like South Africa Australia New Zealand. So oh. but it's it's on kind of late. So yeah, they start. I think the first games tomorrow night. Mostly they start next weekend. Anyway, all right. Cheers. Yeah, a bowl, a singer, bowl right? beer. Singer. Yeah, it's a sing. It's a, it's a, uh, yeah, it is a sing. Well, there's a bit of shadow here. Hey? Anyway, we've got the sun coming in. Looks, uh, it's kind of sunset time. Bit of a stormy, yeah. stormy horizon. So, uh, cheers. Cheers, man. Good seeing you. Good to see you too. How's life? How's Singapore? What's going on? Life is great. Yep. It can be better if we get rid of these mandates and just live life right but that's um i that's oh yeah today right so we got what? all these politicians putting these mandates and yeah so we will try and avoid talking about any of that rubbish but i suppose just quickly though is it just to ask you because I, I don't I haven't really followed the news on singapore are you kind of going backwards again now are you is it did it start going forwards and now you're going backwards you don't, i don't even follow anymore so <laughs> okay good end of chat yeah, exactly. let's talk about more interesting stuff. So, um, yes, we do that. you know, it's always like let's use time wisely, right? So, indeed, yeah, I so. totally agree. So, what's um, yeah, big bold idea. Well, this is uh, this is uh, hopefully our successful podcast because no one will know who's watching it that we have. I think yeah. we tried three times with <laughs> Wi Fi issues and, and everything else, but um. Which is always good because it's been good catching up anyway on those kind of uh, half podcast calls, the couple that we've had. But um, yeah, why don't we jump in with your big bold? I mean, the, we've got the bold awards. What's your your big bold prediction or your big bold idea for for twenty twenty two, which is only just around the corner, I suppose. Big bold prediction, good news or bad news? <laughs> let's have all good Where news. We start it's Friday afternoon. We're having a beer. Okay, let's start with the good news, right? <laughs> yep, go on. I build, my big bold prediction for next year 2022 is that things are going to get quite normalized uh, and people are going to go back to the traveling and have this all positivity and all that crap that we had endured for the past 18 months will just go away so that's my awesome great news the positivity setting the stage two months before 2022 in the right direction that's it Brilliant. Well, I'm happy then because I want to travel next year. So hopefully you're right, which, uh, yeah. That's a a will of the people, right? So people's will should be respected. And I I truly see that, uh, like it or don't like it, we are moving that direction. Humanity is growing and it's growing a big way. There's a huge awakening and I truly believe we're moving in a really great direction. I love that. I do love your positive slant on stuff, and I have to agree. I'm typically a positive person, and but there, there over the last two years, really, it's nearly been, isn't it, longer than eighteen months? But there's this kind of divide, really. I mean, it's like people are either just totally negative about everything, and they're just focused on how awful this situation's been, which it has been, understandably, or they're kind of going, "Hey, you know, just look at what great stuff's come out of it," and you know. I think that's kind of the only way to look at it. I mean, do you kind of agree? It seems to be, you know, people are just really yeah, off the cliff about it or, the, or they're seeing the kind of, you know, silver lining in, in cases. Yeah. Well, you know, <clears throat> you are what you eat, right? Indeed. So uh, you become what you consume. So if you consume, if you put your most of your attention in uh, mass media, Okay, uh, you're going to be a part of that and you're not going to consider anything else because that's what you're consuming and that's what you think this is the right way to do. Um, and it's the same thing, you know, like people, 
people stopped eating healthy food for a long time. If you look at the 1970s, right? You go back to 1970s, you look at those old pictures, everybody looked freaking awesome. There were no <laughs> people, right? Is it true or not? Yeah, it probably is. I haven't done the yeah, I, mean, I haven't done it, but I but you're right. Yeah, yeah without doubt. To, look, look your parents' uh, photos. I mean, everybody looked nice and lean. And what the heck happened now? Right? This is a question we need to ask. Well, guess what happened? It happened because we eat so much processed food that is pretty much like sugar and water, and we expect to have a different results. No freaking way. So that's the that's a that's a that's a bad news about uh, people consuming the wrong things, and I think uh, um, at one at one point we are going to realize that you know health is holistic, right? And I think it's not just about like food itself, but the information that you you, you consume, okay? Because the inf- in the information that you consume is super important because that determines the way how your conscious works and your behaviors and your actions, right? This, um, yeah, you're right. And this interest in this mainstream media thing, you just made a comment about people, you know, looking at mainstream media. I was, there's all this, there's a load of banter going on at the moment between CNN and Joe Rogan over all over covid and his recovery and stuff but it's someone he was chatting to made a really good point actually mainstream media isn't really mainstream anymore that's the other funny thing i mean statistically i you know i think cnn's like about 10 percent of the viewers that rogan gets i hadn't really thought about that you know we all talk about mainstream media but they are suffering you know and and it's kind of you know you can see the kind of lies coming out often in what we call mainstream media but i don't think it is mainstream anymore right Really? Well, it, it, it is mainstream because they still have the reach, right? Mm. <clears throat> and that reach uh, for, for decades was done through a, a television. And the new television is this so-called the internet. And they kind of hijack the internet and make it also the same thing centralized. So that's why you start to see some, statu- some statu- statuses that I, I've seen on Twitter before. There are some really good comments that I saved them for later on. I look back now, they're all gone. Mm. Really? I wonder why. What, they, what do you mean they're all gone? They've been deleted by... Exactly. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, so, so this, is, this is the issue, right? So mm. we're talking about complete hijacking because the, the whole basis of internet, think about this for a moment now. The whole basis of the internet is supposed to be decentralized. That's what, that's what everybody jumped in, right? And this is why everybody's jumping in into the Bitcoin because Bitcoin is decentralized. Well, still, I have some questions about that. Actually, I was going through, I was going through some of the research and looking at like, how come we're not asking the right questions about Bitcoin? What are the right questions? There's a, you just, there's a load of things I want to ask you about yeah. now. Hopefully I won't forget them all because I want to, I want to touch on that comment yeah. about the, the internet being, let, let's park that. We'll get back to it. The internet being decentralized, completely agree with you. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but the, yeah. What are, what are the questions you've been asking? And, and when you look at Bitcoin and you looked, you had an expression of kind of not, well, the expression said to me, you don't really believe it's actually decentralized i mean i might have misread your expression wrong but that yeah what are the questions you've been asking around the whole crypto bitcoin space and what are the yeah what 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 are you what are you seeing well what happens when the electricity goes down like does well you mean like temporarily well whatever i mean we're seeing the blackouts happening right well, yeah, I mean the, yeah. but I mean the, the the connection to, I mean a server's not connected. Yeah, I mean it's the, the 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 for me the decentralized nature of it is is the distributed nature of it on lots of people's computers, yeah. servers, right? But so so the reason why I'm asking this is because in the end of the day, um, if we're going to use Bitcoin, for example, as a, a, 
uh, a storage for the value. Okay, that's a completely different set of questions we need to ask. Or if we're going to use the Bitcoin as a way for, for as a currency that we're going to use to buy things, that's completely different questions to ask. Yeah. The answer to this is that the, uh, and that's why, that's the reason why I, why, why I said about the um, internet. The internet is supposed to be decentralized and is no longer decentralized. And the reason why it's not decentralized is because if you look at the entire internet infrastructure today, it's pretty much like it's in control of these giants who pretty much with one uh, switch, they can just turn you off. Well, I mean, Facebook's obviously the best example, but I suppose in, in a way the internet is decentralized. However, you've then got, you know, Facebook that has whatever, however many billion users they now have who have servers and, you know, you, you, you log in via the, you, you access their platform via the internet, but ultimately you're on their servers. You are, you know, controlled within their environment sitting on the internet. So there's just massive tech companies that own huge pieces of real estate within a, a decentralized network, which is not, you know, now you've just got very little areas of decentralization left, right? I mean, you've got massive controlled environment sitting within it, I think is how I would see it. I don't know if that's right, but yeah. Well, I mean, we're, we're not just talking about Facebook. We're talking about the infrastructure that is owned by Google, the infrastructure that, that it's owned by Amazon. And the list goes on, right? Mm. So in the end of the day, we're talking about the internet also has been hijacked in a way. Just like what TV has been hijacked over the years, and now they control that reach, the new TV is the internet, is this here. This is the new TV. Yeah, it, it is indeed. <laughs> exactly. And so what we are experiencing right now, we're experiencing, we're kind of like in a World War III, but without firing a bullet. That is pretty much the war on a mind shift. What do you think can be done to fix the internet? I mean, do you think, you know, regulation around, you know, the, the big tech companies is a, is, can be done? I mean, the problem with as soon as you try and control it, you often create more problems. But, you know, is it just a case of checking out or, you know, what do you think can well, be I mean, done? Think, think about this for a moment. You know, um, you can take a Bank of England. You're from UK, right? Originally, yeah, yeah. A long yeah. time ago, but yeah. You know, they... For centuries, I mean, they've been having a control of these currencies and, you know, the repo market pretty much originated from Bank of England, you know, um, Federal Reserve, same thing, right? So I think, I think what we need to do as we, as a humans, we need to truly think in terms of less centralization and more distribution, more distribution. And I truly believe 2022 will pretty much like give us that direction with the positivity of a human um, awareness. We're going to start to see that, that, that will of the people that it is no longer about the central control. It's about the distribution because the distribution gives us this balance that we're looking in life, not centralization. And I think, I think, you know, well, everything that you need to know in life, in economics, politics, the most important foundation of that is the history. And this is what a lot of people, they, they don't know. You ask people here in Singapore, they have no clue because their history is like only 50 years. And so... The idea here is that, you know, we need to go back and understand how the history worked over the years, the powers and all that stuff, the establishments and everything else, and how we came to this point, how we got to here. And this is the, we're not asking these right questions, uh, but I truly believe that the positivity that's going to, that 2022 is going to bring to people is going to allow us to ask this amazing question to each other, where that is going to be the new awakening uh, that's going to fuel the opportunity for humankind to level up and give ourselves a more distribution in terms of the power, because we can 
no longer have a new evolution here that we're looking for, the inventions and, and innovations with a centralized power, period. How do you, can you give me some, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I kind of love the vision of that, but, and, and I understand what you're saying, but I mean, you're kind of saying, you know, distribution of power. I mean, actually cryptocurrency is quite a good example of that, I think in some ways, but we don't really know quite where it sits or how it's going to work. But, you know, give me, can you give me some concrete examples of how you could see that working, you know, that the people kind of in a distributed fashion, making decisions, having more sway. Yeah, is that, is that what you mean? This is an early. This is an early stage. We're in a, such an early stage. I mean, when we've been covering in crowdsource week about the crowd currencies and cryptos, um, a lot of people had no clue what we were talking about, right? That we, we were covering this from a day one in our conferences, right? Um, and it truly it evolved, you know, in a big way. And I wish. I did, you buy, I bought, did you buy? Did you buy Bitcoin on day I one? I bought so much. <laughs> Actually, we were one of the first first conferences in the world who adopted Bitcoin for the tickets. So we oh, sold okay, tickets right. on Bitcoin. We were the first one, one of the first ones in the world. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was quite a hassle to go and create that infrastructure to get that and put it into the right wallet, but we did it, okay? Fast forward. I'm a I'm, I'm very curious person. I love the innovations and inventions i like to feel it what is it so i don't just go and buy text i go like to put it in practice so when i put that in practice and i figure out okay well this is how everything works this is how the wallet works and everything else uh people still had no clue what bitcoin was but i'm still today i'm still truly puzzled truly truly puzzled by so much wisdom that we have in the world we're still not even asking the questions is the Bitcoin truly that programmable or that source that gave us this decentralization or is a Bitcoin a Trojan horse? For, for what? Big corporations or like, like what, what do you mean? Is it a Trojan horse? It's an interesting, well, interesting you know, idea. Yeah, exactly. We're not asking the right questions, right? And unless we ask the right question, I'm true, I, I truly believe that the quality of your questions will determine the quality of your outcome. And we're asking a very shallow questions and there may be probably reasons why we're asking these shallow questions, but we're not going deeper to ask the questions, is this Bitcoin a Trojan horse? Or is this... A, a source code that was given by this Satoshi or whatever that is, we still can't find that person. And again, I don't want people to think about conspiracy because you know what? Conspiracy is not doing your work. A lot of people who call and say conspiracy, those people are very shallow. Those people, they just go by what the mass media gives them. So anything that has to do with the conspiracy or theories Please go deeper and understand what are the bases. So my question is like, we can find everything on this planet Earth. We can freaking find everything below the orbit, above the orbit, in the freaking space, but we can freaking find Satoshi. <laughs> Who do you think he is? Well, exactly. <laughs> That's not, the, not the, the best question in the world, but it's a question that a lot of people ask. But yeah. I literally, I ask these questions. <laughs> And I literally spent hours looking into YouTubes and Rumbler and everything to look and find those people who are answering the right questions or, or answering the right questions or asking the right, the, 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 the right questions. And I'm still puzzled because we're still not pushing forward and asking the right questions about this. And I truly believe that we should ask about like, okay, well, you know, we got this source code that hops and goes into the whole uh, programmable world of the internet. Um, yes, there's like 21 million of these uh, Bitcoins and uh, 100 million Satoshis is one Bitcoin. Um, but can we, can we just get to the point that, okay, the Satoshi, who is that person? Uh, and beyond that, like, okay, well, 
what was the reason of Bitcoin coming in now? And when I see when people answering these questions on YouTube about, oh, the reason was because Satoshi was pissed off with this. We still don't know who Satoshi is and we still have a story about the Satoshi. There's a, there's a good documentary in there somewhere, I think. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Find, finding Satoshi. We are creating all the kind of stories about Satoshi. He was so pissed off. He was not coming from finance. Back. I mean, I got all kinds of stories about all different types of Satoshis, but the answer is that we still don't have a Satoshi. Anyway, going fast forward, why it's coming in this time. Okay, this printing money machine, it didn't start 10 years ago. This printing money machine started way back. In 1970s, when a dollar was debased from a, from, from a gold standard, that was the beginning. Actually, it happened before that Bank of England was doing first. But the U.S. dollar broke that treaty in a big way and said, okay, now we're going to just print money. And ever since, 196 nations, they just kept printing money. 50 years later, we are printing like crazy. Mm. Anyway, we've gone to all kind of different subjects, but let's bring it back to the, the power of decentralization, right? And how I, how I see that future could look like. The future of decentralization is that it is not about a one leader or two leaders. It is about we're all a leaders in a making. Just like your body cells, like, you know, your one body cell doesn't stop and say, okay, hey, you know, what are you doing? Or I'm leading. No, but everything's in coordination to one another. And I think, I think, I think we need to, and this has to do a lot with the level of consciousness. So um, unless we have the level of consciousness, you're not going to have the level of decentralization that we're looking for. Technology is not going to solve our problem. We thought technology is going to solve our problem, right? And here we are in today's world that we find out crap. It's not solving, it actually is making bigger problems because the problem is not the technology itself. The problem is that, that the level of consciousness that we have as a human beings, like the problem with the heart that we have, that's a big problem. And unless that is being fixed, nothing can be fixed. I just, yeah, I mean, I agree. I think, you know, I think, I don't know whether it's utopian or what, but the, you know, the whole kind of decentralized model of a future, I think makes great sense if, if people behave in the right way. And I don't mean that in a crack in the whip sense. I probably mean it in the way you're talking about, you know, people being conscious, I, I, you know, just being aware and, you know, what, when you say, when you use that word consciousness, what do you mean? Give, give me some perspective on that. Well, you know, the, the, the consciousness, the, because the ultimate goal is to get to that super consciousness, right? But it starts with a consciousness. And that consciousness is being completely attacked today because we have so much, so much information, which is a, a bad data, a wrong data that is getting into, your, into, your, into, into you. And you're trying to figure out a different outcome. So we need first, and I, and I truly believe the enemy of people is the mass media. If, if, if you get me to the point that I go, which one we should fix first is the mass media. Mass media is the creator of this big problem that we have today. And you, when you say mass media, you're talking traditional, any, any corporation driven kind of media yeah. company, right? That's exactly. putting news out there. Exactly. And and they're the danger what because of the inf because of why they because of their motivations and their incentives and you know why they why they want to share information right yeah yeah and and and, and now we're seeing that the hijacking of a, of a new form of media which is the internet and the framework that we already are part of this and pretty much like this phone without the Google experience or Facebook experience or Amazon experience, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And so that's being hijacked. 
There are a lot of great guys who work in Amazon. I know a lot of great guys who work in, in Google, a lot of great guys who work in Facebook, you know, but I'm telling you, this has been hijacked by a lot of these organizations, just like the media has been hijacked decades ago. And do you think, fix it? I, I, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. I mean, do you think, you know, what is the answer then? I mean, is it alternative channels of yeah. information and, but, but do you just not, you know, are people just always people? Do you not run into the same problems as, you know, that Joe Bloggs who gets the big YouTube following, who becomes bigger and bigger, then, you know, he then becomes influenced through or, or has different incentives. And, you know, then his message and his narrative starts to become like the mass media narrative because of the size and because of what they can earn. Do you think there's, is it, is it just part of the human condition, do you think? Well, a human condition, yes, of course. I mean, Jesus was betrayed because of money, right? So the incentive of, of, of all of this is pretty much like follow the money. And I'll yeah, just for sure. Yeah. Eye, right? uh, but I, I, I truly believe that we're seeing people who are saying, like, forget it. What's more important than money? It's freedom. What's more important than money? It's happiness. It's the abundance. I want to see happiness in abundance. I don't want to see people groaning and being ugly in their in their faces and not not smiling. I don't want that. I don't want a society around me who are groaning every single day. I want a happy society. I want people around me to to share the love that we have for one another. And this is the ultimate what we want. Everybody, every human being, and when I say every human being, is like non-evil spirit, because the evil spirit is the one who are creating all this mess. But every human being here, we want that, that ultimate love. We want that, 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 that sharing of happiness that we have. So very, very interesting times, very exciting times in the same time. Very dangerous time in the, same, in the same time. So, you know, this this happens once in a lifetime. This has never happened before. This is what you have to know. This has never happened before where everything is just converging in all one point. And I think I think um, I think we have this 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 incredible future once that level of consciousness just unlocks and we're going to see an amazing life that is waiting for us beyond our imagination we can't imagine that we, we can okay facebook can imagine this metaverse right with virtual reality i've been i've been i've been watching that space for a long time actually i was one of the first adopters with my advertising agency in new york where we went to did create like ar experiences where people had no clue. I mean, we had to use like a phone, like going like this to get that, that AR. There were no goggles. Fast forward, I'm watching again because now it's becoming really interesting because now the push towards metaverse is coming from these big boys like Facebook and all these guys, right? And what they're doing now, they're folks, okay, well, now we got the utility factor, but we got to bring in the, the hardware factor and what's happening right now with all these organizations, something that you don't hear this a lot in the mass media again, is you do not hear this, this expression called creative destruction. So all of these guys that are doing creative destruction. They're not building better. Forget about building better. They're doing creative destruction. Give us an example of create. I've, I've not heard that expression before, here's, but give, yeah. it, give us an example of creative destruction. Here's, here's, an, here, here's an example of creative destruction. Creative destruction is basically, this was, the, uh, this was uh, a, a miracle product, right? That came 13 years ago uh, from Steve Jobs announcing a Moscone Center in San Francisco. Bang, and changed everything. I have a buddy of mine who was a black Blackberry guy, right? I, so I used to be a Blackberry guy yeah, as well I, back in the I, day. I but yeah. he's, he's a great guy, but he's stubborn. He knows if he's going to watch this, he's, no, he, he's going to know I'm talking about him. But I love him to death. He's a great guy, but he's stubborn. So 
I was having a meal with him and I was telling him about the iPhone, like how revolutionary this iPhone is going to be. It's going to change the whole entire way of how we're going to. And it's like, no freaking way. I will never, ever, ever, ever in my hundred years or whatever life I have waiting for me, I'll never do a touch screen because I just love the buttons. Guess what? Two years later, buttons are gone. He was using iPhone. <laughs> so it's happening. Same thing again. You're talking about an organization who force things into the into the consumer minds. Who force it? That's a that's a created destruction. You have no choice. Right now, you and I, we have no choice to meet because you know what? I would love to come to your place in in Thailand. Actually, every three months, I used to go to PP Island and other places in Indonesia. Every three months, that was the one reason why I moved to Singapore eight years ago, because I love this part of the world. I love the beaches and everything else. Now I can't. So they're doing this creative destruction to push their agenda fast forward into this world of VR world. And so an example of what iPhone is doing that 13 years ago, they know that this product, this product probably has another maximum, another five years that this product becomes nothing anymore. People don't want to use it anymore. So what they're doing is that they say, okay, well, we got this metaverse coming and this immersive internet, right? But this immersive internet can be in this internet landscape that we have, like sitting in front of, in front of uh, each other with a Zoom and in front of a laptop and typing it. No, no, it's got to be something else. It's got to be some kind of wearable that we put it in our glasses or something. And all of a sudden that we're immersing ourselves and we being part of those experiences in real time. And sooner or later, Apple is going to come up with the glasses with the hardware. It's, it's on its works next year. And that's, they're, going to, they're going to announce the first generation of the AR glasses. And sooner or later, those AR glasses by the third generation, fourth generation will eliminate this a revolutionary product and you'll just have glasses and maybe fast forward what you're going to have a you're probably going to have instead of the glasses you're just going to have a contact lenses and you just put them on and that's it do you like um you, you know as you're talking i'm thinking about do you watch the tv series black mirror do you watch any of the black actually, mirror episodes because yeah it almost sound, you're almost <laughs> actually talking one of those episodes i watched that show one time we were <laughs> We were, we were in New York with, with Janice, with my wife, and, and we were in Airbnb, and they had the Netflix. So we just started things. We, we don't have TV at our home. We never watch TV, never subscribe to Netflix. Actually, I did subscribe to Netflix just for 30 days free trial. But during those 30 days, they sucked minimum 10 hours of me. I said, no freaking way. This is addictive. So I stopped it. <laughs> when we were in New York, we were like, we turned it, and all of a sudden we were watching and there was this Black Mirror uh, show and it went on and on and on. All of a sudden we find ourselves that, oh my God, five hours we were watching this Black Mirror and then we moved to the next show and next show. So, but coming back to, your, to, 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 to what you're talking about, the Black Mirror, it is here already. It is already here. Well, he's a Black, I mean, Charlie Brooker is, He's an incredibly visionary writer, director, but you know, he, I, funnily enough, he, he, one of the ones he put out, I can't remember series two or three was, it was all about, and it must be five years ago. Now it was about people kind of living off this social credit score, which of course now China is, you know, being kind of pointed out for doing which, and you know, they had in it, there was a counselor that would counsel you on how to get your rating up by hanging around with the right people. And, and he, I think the latest series was kind of sidelined because it obviously had something relating to the pandemic and they didn't want to put it on. But um, my, my question, I suppose, you know, whether, whether you watch it or not, what, what do you think are the big things that are coming there? I mean, you just mentioned the glasses and, you know, is that, is that just, is that stuff you're seeing as an absolute? I mean, you know, this is where we're going and is it something you look forward to or something uh, that. Okay. So here's the thing. So, I am all for innov innovations and inventions and all that, but I am not. I am not about 
forcing into the people's lives and destroy people's lives for the for the interest of the uh, big corporation or Facebook or Apple or whatever. So I am totally against it. And I think what you see right now, you see a lot of the politicians that are fronting that agenda mm. everywhere around the world. That's what they're doing, literally. I mean, if you, if you don't get it by now, you're never going to get it. So just get it that the politicians are fronting that agenda. And what they're trying to do, they're trying to move us up as fast as we can to that world of the virtual world. Okay, so for me personally, I love that part of the virtual world, but guess what? I just love the real world. Because in the real world, I can hug people. I love hugging people. Actually, when I married my wife, before I married my wife, you know, they're like Chinese background. They don't hug. And I said, watch me. <laughs> it's not going to be not even a few months that in a family we will hug. And yes, that's what we did because hug is contagious. Love is contagious. Happiness is contagious. But if we stop, we want to kill this for the inventions that we want to see the world. I truly believe that is not the answer. And I think I think this is where the world. So there's going to be some mix up later on as we go. Um, I truly believe that those kind of inventions, if we allow the spirit of human being, because every single invention, every single innovation that happened in the world, it is started from a spirit. It's not because your smartness, oh, how connected you are, or how much funding you have, it's because it was first started from a spirit. And a spirit, it doesn't come from my dad or from your mom or from whatever that is, it comes because God has given us that spirit to every single individual. That's the reason why the cows and the goats and sheep, they don't innovate and they don't invent. They're still sheep and they're goats and they're, they're cows. And we must respect that. If we don't respect that, I don't know what else we're going to respect. And I truly believe that, you know, we need to one day, we need to come to the consensus and say, you know what? The respect of a spirit being is more important than anything else that we see out there beyond the money. And once we get to that awakening, which I truly believe that awakening is happening, it's already happening, but the 2022 is going to set that positivity in the right direction. That I can't wait. It's going to be very, very exciting. There's awesome. so many people are so waiting. It's, it, it's going to come like a storm. It's going to come like, a, like such a storm that's going to catch all these people who are trying to create this world by like, like literally, it's going to, it's, they're going to be like so surprised and be like, wow. Because nothing can beat the collective spirit coming together. You and I, we have a relationship like this because we met so many times, right? Indeed. We each other, right? We did. We met a long time ago, actually, now. Exactly. Uh, like, probably 10 years ago. And it's very, almost impossible to have a relationship like you and I, we have through this virtual digital world, whatever you want to call it. So we still that need, we need to respect that, 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 that real world that we have, that God has uh, given to us. I am... Um, I I agree with you. I mean, I'm not a, I would, I always want to be firmly planted in the real world, but I do think, you know, over the next decade or two, I think we're going to see huge kind of interaction between that real world and the digital world. And who knows how far that will go. I'm kind of excited about that as well, actually, but, but at the same time, you know, you can't beat sitting by the pond, having a chat, you know, being physically in the same place. I don't think we'll ever, you'll never recreate that digitally. I don't think that's ever going to really I think, get there. I, I think like what we need to understand, we've gone so far with our innovations and those innovations being hijacked and now like they're trying to create completely another innovation in front of people's eyes and, and completely like, like rob people's joy. And that's not the way to do it. There's a reason why we've been here for thousands of years, right? It didn't happen overnight. We're trying to make things overnight, like little, like we're trying to create this virtual world now. It's like 
hello, this generation will come in and they'll get over. And so, so this is where it is. And I, I'm, I'm really excited because I think, I think we're going to see the, the innovations and inventions that are going to take us to, to the world that we have never, ever imagined. And that world, that world that, 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 that brings us uh, to the level where we do not have to fear anymore of anything, including death. I was just sharing with my team this morning. I said, what are the number one, what is the number one fear that people have? And they go, death. Then I said, R- really? That's what they said. How interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Actually, that's that's true. The number one fear in people's mind is death. Do you know what's number two? You'd no. be surprised. You'd be so surprised. You'd be like, what? Um, uh, money? No. Lack of it? No. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be surprised. There, there Go are, on. It's going to be something who, totally different. That but... I know that they don't have money, but they're happiest people. They're happy campers. And nothing <laughs> happens to them. <laughs> Except they're shit scared of death. So what? Yeah, go on. What's number two then? No idea. It's uh, you'd be surprised. It's uh, public speaking. Ah, of course. My God, there's there's a it's massive a gap. gap. There, yes, there yeah. is there is a huge gap between public speaking and death. That's yeah, that's so, what's interesting. Okay, so. Okay, so you have death here, right? And then you have this public speaking. <laughs> now, what is it like? Something in between death and a public speaking that is like between. <laughs> One to two. That's a very that's an interesting uh, survey to do. Yeah. So I asked I asked this to I asked this to the entrepreneurs who want to be, and most of the time they get it wrong. You know what is it? Failing in public. Y- yeah, sure. And that's the test that I do to the entrepreneurs out there. If they don't have the guts to go out there and fail in public, to me, they're not entrepreneurs. They are opportunist entrepreneurs. They may bring a company to a, a, a unicorn level, whatever, but in the end, that unicorn didn't create any value in a marketplace. And to that point, you're no longer an entrepreneur. You, what you did, you destroyed that money. You, des- you destroy that energy because that energy is supposed to go into some good level and what you did, you destroyed it. So you know, you're not an entrepreneur. Indeed. Hey, listen, I'm looking at the time and, and there's a couple of quick fire questions I want to ask you before. And I know you're going to have not necessarily quick fire answers. So let's, there's only two or three, but let's get into it. I, I, I didn't get your answer. I didn't get your question. So go ahead. And no, ask it's definitely. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I, I'm just going to so, say flat, flat out. I don't know. Someone who's been a, someone who's been a huge influence or inspiration to you that, you know, during your life, whenever. Yeah. I think, you know, my mother, um, Although whatever she knew, she knew, but watching her going through the, through the scenario, you know, I was born in Kosovo um, and as a 10 years old, my, my dad passed away. My mom left with four kids in Kosovo. Fast forward three years later, the country goes into the shambles and hyperinflation and all that stuff. And then the war, that's a, that's a, that was that was something I seen her positivity and happiness. That's what I got. So I, I, you, you don't see me. You never see me sad because I, I learned from her. So that's the biggest inspiration that I have from her. And I learned in life that if you if you want to achieve things, get your attitude right. That's what my attitude that my mom gave it to me. That that attitude is who I am today. And with this, this attitude, I'm able to go anywhere in the world. And to me, that's, a, that's the biggest inspiration. Go, going beyond my mom, of course, there are a bunch of other people that I've, you know, I've gone through it. The, one of the leaders that truly shaped my thinking in a big way, uh, and there are a couple of them, is uh, uh, Grant Cardone uh, from, uh, uh, he's based in Miami. Uh, Brandon Dawson is his partner. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki talking about financial independence, which is very important. And 
many, many more. Uh, but this is just some examples of these are like a humble people. Uh, these are not like uh, these are not like a uh, uh, hundred billion dollar people like uh, Elon Musk. Like everybody said, like oh Elon Musk, mm-hmm. whatever. Okay, well it's fine, you know. But is Elon Musk spending time to have this conversation with you? Or learning you how to, or teaching you how to do this stuff. I don't think so. And I think we need we need people. We need these 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 masters to come closer to the people and teach them. And when I came across these people, they're doing this this education, this right education, because I truly believe that there's other side of education which is completely corrupt. Uh, and I think. Yeah, so being connected with the people who are given the right information is, is, is very important. And that's what uh, I am today. And I keep learning every single day. Great. I, we won't talk about it now, but I hadn't realized that you were brought up in Kosovo, actually. We haven't talked about it, but yeah, really interesting. And I, and um, yeah, I'd have to totally agree with you. Mine would be my mum as well, you know, in terms of, and and same sentiment in terms of how it sets you up, you know, the influence of 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 my mother when i was growing up massive in terms of my attitudes now so yeah and every time every time when i had difficult times i will always just think about okay well wait a minute my mom was going through the most terrible time to me this is a piece of cake let's go and have fun yeah in, let's indeed. go let's go double down let's go let's level up any books you would recommend a book or more than one if you want, but you know, what, what would you recommend uh, as, as a book? Is there a book that you've read over time that's been, you know, the book? <laughs> oh my God. There's a lot of books. I, I, I try to. It's I not easy to, to read, narrow it down to one, I try, right? but yeah. I try to read. I tr- so first of all, I, I don't, I don't read um, fiction. Uh, and I don't read novels. Uh, I, at one point, I will get there. Uh, I love like the real stories. Uh, I love like a, you know, like a, you know, self enhancement type of a books that helps you to grow and a spiritual. Uh, the number one book, and you know, uh, I'm sure everyone should have their number one book uh, that you, you know, they should they should be anchored on it. For me, it's Bible. Uh, and a lot of times, like people say, oh, Bible is like religious. I don't think Bible is a religious book. Bible is the number one, number one selling book for decades and decades. And it's never going to replace, no other book is going to replace Bible. And the reason why I say that is because there is so much history there. When I go and read the history in the Bible, and I go and like match it with things. I am the one that I can go and say, okay, well, guess what? This makes sense here, but this was not the right way that they put it here. They pervert it a little bit. And I go and find the other source of information and I try to match it. And to me, it's fascinating. It's fascinating why education has not made Bible as a, as a way for people to enhance the level of, of, of not just spirituality, but also the way of, how we think about the history and all that stuff. So that's one. So if you're not Christian, you don't want to read Bible, that's fine. Go and read some book that's going to give you that level of a history deep, okay, and wide as well. Uh, the other second, other books that I read all the time, the most uh, recent one that I that I read, it's, it's called uh, uh, The Grunge. The grunge or the grunge, 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 grunge stands for grand universal oh. cash, cash haste. It's written by the uh, Buck Minister Fuller. It's a great book. Definitely recommend reading everybody, especially you can match it. People talk about like 1984, George Orwell, whatever. Yes. I mean, it's like, you know, he has this animal farm and all that. He talks about big brother, the eye looking at you, but this book, it's literally like you can you can go it's like checklist checklist checklist. It's a great book. Cool. Well, I will leave a uh, I'll leave links in the in the uh, in the in the notes um, for people who want to look that up. But um, and last question before we we check out, it, freedom. How do you define freedom? Interesting year to think be thinking about that. We've all had to think about it. But you know, like what, what's your how do you define freedom? What is freedom to you? Freedom is not optional. Period. 
No one is allowed to tell you what to do and how to eat and who you should hang out, period. That's it. Cool. Freedom is ultimate. Can you imagine you can take an eagle who flies so high? Do you know that eagles, they fly at the height where the airplanes fly? That, I didn't, that, no, I didn't know that. 38,000 feet. They, fly, yeah, they can fly all the way. But if you take an eagle and you put it into the cage for over a period of time, this was an experiment that was done. And you take the eagle out of the cage and you set them free. They just don't know how to fly. Freedom is what we as a humans that God did not give us wings, but the freedom is the human being's wings. And without our wings, we can fly. Period. And the wings, it's our freedom. Cool. Hey, Epi, we managed to do our... I think I just finished my beer, so All right. timing is good. We did our we we did our Friday bold beer. Um, it's been really good to chat. I love your positivity always. You know, we we've yeah, caught man. up a few times off off podcast, but um, if people want to know more about you, know about the bold awards, know you know, find out, follow you. Where's the best place to kind of get in touch? Yeah, I mean, you can just go. You can go and and uh, bold dash awards dot com. Uh, that's where we have our boldest projects and boldest people that we gave uh, this badge of boldness. Uh, you can find me at crowdsourcingweek.com or you can just search my name, Epi Ludwig, and you can find me where, anywhere, hopefully, until Facebook decides one day that I should not exist. Well, they've been deleting your tweets. Twitter have been deleting your tweets. That does surprise me. But um, I yeah. will leave for anyone listening. I all that everything Epi just said. I I will leave all your links in the in the notes inside the YouTube yeah. Um, Matt, windows. You know, so thanks for thanks for this, and always great seeing you. Um, and keep doing what you're doing, and keep doing what you're believing. I think, you know, that spirit that you have is the most important thing. That you have that attitude. And I think uh, the attitude of positivity is what what is going to bring us together once and for all. Indeed, mate. Have a yeah. It's been good to catch up. Always love it. Have a great weekend. Hopefully, I will see you in Venice next year. But we will speak before then. And if you can get to Thailand at any point, please come up to Pi, of course. So yes, yeah. Looking forward to that. Thank you. Awesome, mate. Cheers. To do what we want to do. To Muhammad Ali and Sonny Barger, the president of Hell's Angels. This is one oh nine five.